Hi everyone, so this video I want to show you how to bring uh, objects back and forth between uh, 3D, 3D software as well as ZBrush. Okay, so um, because uh, our poly counts in ZBrush is pretty high, so this is 5 million poly counts, uh, we need to optimize it and make a lower version of this model be before we can do this very efficiently. So in this case, I'll use the 3D software as uh, Maya. Uh, I'll bring uh, this uh, model back and forth between Maya and ZBrush. And then I'll also show you if you want to model some parts in Maya, you can also bring it into ZBrush very easily. So everything I'll use uh, OBJ to export back and forth. Okay, so for example, now I'm using my body. I'll just press uh, make body mesh 3D. And what it does is that it will just create this uh, sub tool over here. So create that from poly mesh 3D. So this tool will only have one, um, one tool at the scene right now. So just this body. Okay, so now I want to separate the head. Okay, so what I do is I have the head and body separated because I want to do a different dynamic value to these two. And then I'll export them both optimized under 40k, 40 count. So, uh, so Maya will be able to uh, take like um, 40k, 40 count, but maybe uh, 1 million and above, it will start to lag, be super laggy. So that's not efficient. So that's why we need to uh, make it optimized before we bring into Maya. Okay, so now I finish this uh, lower body part. Now I just want to focus on the head. And then I want this head to be uh, all merged together on another sub tool over here. So what do I do? So I only see the head right now. I'll do a merge visible. And then it will create uh, this uh, head over here. So merge visible, thing. So some people, they use merge visible, they think, eh, nothing happened in this scene. But actually what happened is that merge visible created another scene for you. So this head is now over here. Um, sorry. Um, it's actually moved move to the front. So the head is now here. The body is now here. Okay. So I have a head that is everything is merged. Three point three million body count. I'll change the resolution to forty. I'll just uh, press Dynamesh, and it's all remeshed together. Okay. So it still has different uh, four different colors. So I'll press Control W once. And I'll smooth it a little bit, and then I'll do a redynamesh again. So this is just so that uh, everything is cleaner and um, more lightweight for exporting. Okay, so now I want to bring this head to the other poly model. Okay, so I'll go to the other, this uh, body model. I'll append this uh, head to come in. Much head. Okay, so the, the body is still very heavy. The, the head is already very lightweight. So now we need to uh, make this uh, body very lightweight as well. So for the body, I can choose uh, Z remesher and then I just press Z remesh. So from 1 million, around 1 million body count, it will slowly calculate a little bit and it will give you a very nice optimized model. So this takes a bit longer time because uh, it's able to compute the loops a little bit better. And I thought uh, since I'm bringing it into Maya, I might as well uh, have something of an even nicer topology. So uh, Z measure does an even better job with the topology than uh, Dynamesh. And uh, yeah, it's pretty efficient. Okay, so uh, it almost looks like this was modeled in uh, Maya, you know. So the, that's one of the things that's nice about Z measure, although it takes a little bit more time. So these two models, I have it already. So now I'll do a merge down on top. So both of these merge together. Now I'll just, uh, so you see, both of these merge together. I'll just export this as an OBJ. Okay, I'll export this as a body girl OBJ. And I'll go to my Maya scene. Okay, this Maya scene already has a sort model. I'll set my project. Okay, so I have a, I show you how I set my project. So I have a female character project. This is all my Maya, Maya folders. So this is a Maya project folder. And then under my scenes, I have a ZBrush scene with lots of ZBrush stuff. And then outside the, outside the ZBrush scene is uh, all my Maya stuff. So that's how I do it. Oh, at least uh, you have a way to organize your files and everything should be in one folder. In this case, it's a Maya uh, project setting folder. Okay, so I set the project here. So when I open up my scene, I can open up here. Okay, um, now I'm going to do an import, file import, and I'm going to import in the uh, file that I exported just now. So I exported a low body girl tree OBJ, and it looks like this. Okay, so just now we exported two parts. Now it has two parts. Okay, so what, what's cool about uh, modeling in uh, between uh, ZBrush and Maya is that 
actually let me just show you a brand new scene um, sorry about that because I want you to really understand so brand new scene set a project to the my project folder I import the uh, the lower volume okay so when when you when we bring in the girl okay it has uh, two 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 parts because um we we have two uh four different colors over here so the more four different colors you have from the obj you will do more separations that's why i need to do a control w just now on the hair okay so uh, just make sure you understand and then uh, the poly count is very low so we have 28000 that's why it's not lagging at all okay so if i were to model over here Okay, I can uh, I can bring in my the sword that I have earlier. Okay, so this sword now everything is joined together because I import it as an OPJ. But you can always uh, model it in separate parts, you know. So, for example, I purposely model these two parts separately because later when I were to do a uh, uh, surface noise in ZBrush. I'm able to do so very easily because these two parts is modeled separately. Okay, so this uh, and then this uh, cylinder itself actually have a cylinder just like this. And what I did is I duplicate it and I rotate ninety degrees. And then it is it's not perfect modeling, you know. It's it's like intersecting with each other, but it actually doesn't matter because. Um, if you think about it later, I'm going to do a DynaMesh on this and then the DynaMesh will resolve everything together. So there are things that we can do in uh, with combination of Maya and uh, DynaMesh that we can get away with and uh, it can make it pretty fun to work with. Okay, so just so you know. So everything over here, um, I try to separate them according to the material. So this is the blade. And then this is a bit of the handle part, and then this is the, the sword guard, and then so it's so it's all has a, a bit of separation, and then later it will help you when we model this. Okay, if I were to um, combine this, so uh, if I were to export this sword, I just do a file export as a sword. Okay, export the selection. This sword position will be exactly the same when I bring it into ZBrush. Okay, so same thing for this female character. You notice I didn't move it when I import it in. That's because uh, I want it to keep on the same spot. So this is in the, the position in Maya, and then this is the position in uh, ZBrush. So now in ZBrush, I just want to show you. Uh, we go back to the model with all our separations, with the full control of everything. And then I just want to show you how you normally import from Maya, which is a bit funny because um, what happened is that if I just import right away, my the object I'm selecting now will disappear. So actually, every time you want to import something, you need to import, you need to uh, create a place for holder for it. So what I'll do, I'll duplicate this upper body. So I have a two upper body right now, and then this uh, so this is becomes my placeholder, and then I'll do an import. So the imported sword will replace this uh, placeholder. It's a bit funny, but that's how ZBrush works. So go to my scenes, import in the sword OBJ. So now the sword, you see that? It replaced the upper body. So now it's over here. Another thing to note, the sword position has not changed. It is uh, exactly over here, as I mentioned to you. So everything is sticking together. So uh, if you want them to have separate parts, like what I told you, to have a separate bottom part, top part and then the sword part then we can do more separation you do to split split to parts and then uh, we have all the parts that we want on our model then uh, we can slowly combine them or slowly do a different dynamic to each of them to have the full control as well okay so this is pretty fun so uh, it, we I imported this uh, head over here because also um, maybe if you want to do uh, you know accessories or Maybe I want to make a hairband over here. Just making something quick to illustrate a point. Maybe I want to import in a hairband. Maybe I want to um, put in a sphere. Some beans on top of the hair. 
you know, I I can model this separately in Maya, and then I can just import all this as OBJ. So I have these three parts, uh, just as a simple placeholder to just illustrate my point, and then I combine the shapes, export this as a OBJ. Let's say I call this accessory .obj. Oh yeah, maybe I just want to mention I exported them as um, no groups, no no materials because I hate having the material on. It will create a separate um file for me, so I always make sure it's off. And the upper tree, I also make sure it's off because uh, that's how I prefer it to be. So I always have this setting like this: off, 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 on, on. Okay, so I already exported this, so I'll go to my ZBrush again to show you. So as I mentioned, I need to create a placeholder. So I use my upper body as a placeholder again because it's at the bottom of the list, so it's pretty nice. So I duplicate this, and then this duplicate will be my placeholder, import in my accessory, and now my accessory is here. So the position is actually the same. And then I can do a dynamesh to this. So now it has 400,000 dynamesh resolution, you know, the, can do the normal things in in uh, ZBrush. You can start sculpting from a object that you bring in back and forth from Maya and ZBrush. Okay, so I hope uh, this gives you some idea to uh, do the workflow in uh, ZBrush and Maya or your favorite 3D software. And maybe give you another example. Combine these two together first. Merge. So do with a uh, merge and. Uh, Merge and uh, split objects as you need to. So sometimes you want to merge them, sometimes you want to split them up, and sometimes you want to smooth it, sometimes you want to sometimes you want to create a hole into it, so I hold down alternate. So this can potentially create a hole. So I hold down the alternate when creating the sphere just now and then I create a hole over here. So when you hold down control, uh, you hold down uh, I insert primitive brush and you hold down alternate, you can what do I call it? You can create a hole as well. Hold down alternate. Create a hole here. Unmask it. And then I do a then mesh. Okay, so I'm just illustrating a point that uh, object that you bring in from Maya, you do a dynamic mesh, and then in the end you can cut holes into it, stencil it. Then uh, it can be interesting. And then uh, if there's irregularities, you just do a mirror and weld, and everything will be uh, will be mirrored to the right place, right? Mirror and well with the uh, local symmetry on. That's what I mean. Alright, so uh, yeah, I think I'll start the video here. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.